Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read a scripture from Isaiah 64, verses 1 and 2. O oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might, fl might flow down at thy presence, as when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the water to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries. Nations may tremble at thy presence. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job, Ray. Ray. Anyone have a song request? 54 in the blue book. And so halal is praise, 
And Jah is Jehovah or Yahweh, so praise the Lord. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Amen. When you say hallelujah, you're saying a Hebrew word and you're saying God's name. And uh, praise ye the Lord. And it's 22 times in the book of Psalms. 22 times in the book of Psalms it says praise ye the Lord. And glory be to his name. So there's 22 uh, letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And amen. God desires our praise. And I want to praise him this morning. Amen. Because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. For sending his son to die for us. And that he, that he lives again and lives forevermore. And because he lives, we will live also. And I'm glad for Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. How about we sing Heaven's Jubilee? <clears throat> That's uh, 298 in the blue book. <clears throat> Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead, rising for that jubilee that is just a bed. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be. All the living saints do fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all the heavenly hosts we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be, praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I got a praise report. My sister is coming home from the hospital today. Praise God. Amen. Amen. She uh, is feeling some better, but uh, she'll never, until she gets to heaven, she won't be right. completely healed. But when she gets up there, she will be healed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bob called, I believe it was Wednesday, and he was much better. Amen. Bob. Harper, and he said they'd be here this morning, but something must have turned up. So oh, yeah. I'm going to pray for them. Yeah. They've been through a battle. But one thing to it, God's with us when we're in the valley and when we're in the valley. Amen. 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 Because the God on the mountain is still going to be in the said God would take hold of your hand when you're in the valley and lead you to the mountain. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> You know, there's so many people out there with so many other yeah. needs more than mine that I don't even want to mention the mine. Bless you, Dad. You know? He cares about everyone. I'm 
thankful that we don't have snow this morning. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful, Father God, Lord, for your wonderful name. And we're so thankful, Father God, Lord, that you are holy and sovereign and everything about you, Father God, is perfect, Father. Lord, we just praise you, dear Lord God, that we're able to gather in your name this morning, Father. And Lord God, we truly come to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. And Lord God, we cannot worship you without your Holy Spirit, Father. But Lord God, I just praise you that you told us that we're two or three are gathered in your name, Father, that you are here in the midst, dear Lord. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life for our, our sin, dear Lord, and Lord God, for raising on the third day. And Lord Jesus, I just praise you, dear Lord God, and I just look for your return, Lord Jesus. And, and Father God, Lord, I pray this morning, Father, that you would help each and every request, Father, for Lord God, you know the very desires of our hearts, Father. And, and Lord God, I just pray that each and every one, Father God, Lord, would be answered in your time and in your will, Father God. And, and, Lord, we just thank you for that this morning, Father. Lord, most of all, we pray this morning, dear Lord God, that, that we might be a light to this dark and sinful world, dear Lord God, that, that Jesus' light might shine through us, Father, and that, Lord God, we might lead some poor lost soul to you, Father. And Lord, that they would know the joys and the splendors of the things that you have prepared for those that love you, Father. And, and Lord God, that they would be uh, pardoned and forgive of their sin, Father. And, and Lord God, we just thank you again this morning, Father. We thank you for each and every one that's made it here this morning, Father, and for bringing us all here. And Lord God, we just pray that we might uh, worship you, dear Lord God, and, and give glory to your name this morning. For Father God, you are worthy. And in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. 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 I wanted to share something else that I learned uh, the, the past week or two. You know, Sister Imogene reminded me about it, about uh, God leading you to the mountain. And you know, Moses, uh, Moses had sinned, the Bible told us, about how that Moses got angry and he struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And God told him that he wouldn't lead his people into the promised land. He wouldn't be able to go into the promised land. And it was Joshua that took him there. But Moses asked God, he said he asked God to show him that goodly mountain. He wanted to see that goodly mountain. And God, when Moses, right before Moses died, God let Moses go up to Mount Pisgah. And he could see Mount Hermon that way off in the distance. And he saw that goodly mountain in the promised land. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wasn't just there. God didn't just leave it there. Because there was one day when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the Mount of Transfiguration and there stood Moses and Elijah <laughs> talking with Jesus. So he didn't just get to see it. He stood on that goodly mountain. And I want you to know that God answers your prayers. He might not answer them in our time, but God will answer them in His time and in His way. And glory be to God. I tell you, it's good to wait on the Lord and be of good courage because Amen. He will strengthen your heart. Amen. And I'm glad for who our Savior is. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And talking about obedience, I want you guys to open up your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John is at the end, it's not the um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. It's the one that close to the end of your Bible. Chapter 5. Mm -hmm. That's John. First John. First John chapter five, verse one. We're starting at verse one. Here. Here. What's the first word? We're at the first John chapter one. First John chapter five. The big five. That's Alright. What is that first word? 
whosoever. Who does that mean? Who is whosoever? Everybody. Everybody. Okay. Let's read that together, okay? Whosoever, whosoever believeth that, that Jesus is the Christ, Christ is born of God. God. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Okay. <coughs> so it starts out, whosoever means anybody. Any, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ. So it takes everybody and it says, okay, now everybody who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And there is down this people. Um, um, now what is important about this group of people? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, what's special about them? What's it say at the end of that, at, in that first verse? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So we're special. We're born of God. <coughs> what does everyone who is born of God do? What do you do if you're born of God? Hmm? Well, um, when we love God, we keep His commandments. If we're born of Him... We're going to obey him. We're going to keep his commandments. Um, now, what does that obedience show? When we obey God, what does it show? It shows that we love him. Amen. It shows that we love God. Um, do people around, around you know that you were born of God by the way you obey God? Do, can people tell that you were born of God? Do they know that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? People should be able to tell. They should be able to um, see by the way you do things whether or not you're born of God because they'll see you're obeying God's commandments. <coughs> All right, I want you to think of a fast food restaurant. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Uh, Burger King. Burger King? <laughs> What's your favorite one? Dairy Queen. <laughs> Dairy Queen's got good hot dogs, don't they? What kind of service do you expect at a fast food, fast food restaurant? Fast food restaurant. You expect it fast. You expect to get your food <coughs> right away. It mostly um, is fast instead of um, Captain Yeah, Captain B's is a little slower. Yeah, because it's slower. What if we went, were going through the drive through at Burger King and we had to sit there for an hour? while they made our food. And we had to wait for the people in front of us. It took an hour for their food to get made. It took an hour for the car in front of them. Would we go back there? Just probably. We probably would back out of there or drive up on the curb and, and leave there, wouldn't we? Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be acceptable for us to go there expecting fast food. It would not be acceptable if it took us an hour. It's not Food is slow food. Right, right, right. If we're going to eat food like that, we'll go, you know, Sorry. eat someplace where we're going to sit down and we're not, you know, in a hurry. Because a lot of times when you go through a fast food drive through you're in a hurry. Okay. Well, we're going to think like a fast food restaurant. We're going to play a game. Okay? In this, in this game, you're going to have to act immediately. All right? You'll have to start as soon as I give you instructions. All right. 
The first instruction, I want you to take your Bible, okay, and find the book of Numbers. Ten seconds is all it took you. You still had First time Lord. left over. So I had given you a whole bunch of time. I gave you two minutes to do that. But you had plenty of time, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right. It's all right. Easy. Put your Bibles down. I want you to stand up. I want you to turn around three times and then sit down. Hold on. Wait till I say go. <laughs> okay. Go. You still had time left over. I gave you 30 seconds to do that. It took you like three seconds. <laughs> All right, I want you to look in your Bible now. Look for John 3.16. Good. Put your Bibles down. Stand up. I want you to bend over and touch your toes three times. Wait till I say go. Okay. Go. Okay. You still had time left over. Okay. Of course. Now I want you to find Ephesians 4 and 2. And say the last word in that sentence. Ephesians? Ephesians 4, 4 and 4? 4 and 2. No. What's the last word? Ephesians. Where's Ephesians? Wait, 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 wait. I think it's love. I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. Alright, time's up. Oh. You ran out of time. Ephesians. Ephesians 4 and 2. Yeah. Alright. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take off both of your shoes, untie them or unbuckle them, take them off. And then put them back on. <laughs> this will take Autumn a really long time because she's real picky. At least it's not her socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. right, thumbs up. Oh. oh. Go ahead and put them back on. <laughs> okay. That wasn't very good. That was it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I did. I didn't tell you when to start. I didn't tell you to start. Okay. I was making an excuse for you just waiting on that. Autumn's so particular, she's got to do her just right. Uh huh. I'm trying to get it through the buckle. Oh, no. She starts growling. Oh, no. I got it. Alright, now I want you to get up, I want you to walk to those back, hold on, wait till I say go, the back two corners of the room, touch each corner three times, and then come back and sit, okay? Go. to complete what happened to the time that I gave you. Do we do it again? 
It got smaller, didn't I? Each thing that I gave you was getting bigger, but I was giving you less and less time. Did you find it hard to finish those activities in the time I gave you? Can we do ABC again? Now, what happened when you didn't start um, immediately after it was assigned, after I gave it to you? <clears throat> if you didn't, st if you wouldn't have started immediately, would you have gotten finished? Well, you yeah, already started. Or if you were, you were quicker about it, would you have gotten finished? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he started before you said start, mm -hmm. and then I could start. And if if you didn't start right away, then you wouldn't have gotten finished. Like with the finding Ephesians, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have finished it. <clears throat> if you hadn't started right away. Did you feel, how'd you feel when you were able to finish on time? Pretty good. Pretty good. How'd you feel when you didn't finish on time? Uh, You've got a, she's got a real, uh, look at her face. She does, she does this. <coughs> you were kind of disappointed about it, weren't you? Well, in order for you to experience the feeling of doing a, a good job, you had to act right away. You had to act immediately. In order for us to experience the joy that God has for us, now listen, in order for us to experience the joy that God has for us, we must obey Him immediately. Amen. Um, I want you to open your Bibles to 1 John 5, 1 through 5. We're going to read those again. First John 5, First John chapter 5, 1 through 5. It's our memory verse. We just read it a little bit ago. First John chapter 5, 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. Where again? This is the name Christ is. Oh, right. Right, right. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. <coughs> now... We're going to read Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3 what? Starting at verse 13. Matthew what? Ooh. Chapter 3. Okay. Verse 13. Uh-huh. Yep, there. All right. Let's see. Turn it. We're going to read 13 through 17. Okay. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay. Why did John the Baptist try to discourage Jesus from being baptized? 
Jesus came, came to John to be baptized of him, but John forbade him. What did he say? Why, why did he not want to baptize Jesus? He said, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? He didn't think that he was worthy to baptize Jesus, did he? How did Jesus answer John? What did Jesus say? Look in your look at verse 15. What did Jesus say? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now for us it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Yeah. It needed to be done to fulfill all righteousness to fulfill the scriptures it needed it needed to be done um, how soon did Jesus want to get baptized did he say <coughs> I'll just come back tomorrow you think about it and I'll come back later right now. he want, he said now suffer it to be so now <coughs> um, so how and when did Jesus obey God in this passage. How did Jesus obey God? He obeyed him immediately, didn't he? Yep. Willingly and obediently. Right there. Okay, now let's talk about John the Baptist. Did John know that Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah, he did. How did John feel about baptizing Jesus? He thought he wasn't worthy. What if John had refused to baptize Jesus? Or he had said, you know, let me, let me, let me think about it a couple days because I don't feel right about this. What, 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 would, what, what would happen? John? Yeah, John would have been being disobedient, right? He wouldn't have been obedient. So how and when was John the Baptist obedient to God in the passage? How and when was John the Baptist obedient to God? He did it right then. He did it right then, didn't he? Was God pleased with Jesus and with John? He was. How do we know that God was pleased with them? It says it. It says it, doesn't it? God said so. And he sent a dove to, to, to rest on Jesus. Now, nothing is said about, about God being pleased with John, but John obeyed, and God is pleased with obedience. God calls us to obey him willingly, and he, he calls us to obey him immediately. He doesn't tell us that it's okay for us to think about obeying him. We are to do it now when he tells us immediately. Both John and Jesus showed their love for God when they obeyed him immediately. When we obey God, we please him. In fact, we show that we love God when we obey him. You want to show your love to God? You want God to know that you love him? Obey him. Amen. Okay. Um, obedience doesn't give us a choice of when to obey. Um, I've heard it said delayed obedience is disobedience. Yeah. If you, um, you know, like uh, Jonah, he was told to go to Nineveh. Was that where he was told mm -hmm. to go to? And he didn't want to go. So he hop was like, no, boat. I don't want to do that. Hop, 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 he hopped hop, on a hop, boat. And sail away in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And a big storm came and knocked him off. And God sent a big a big fish to swallow him up. Uh-huh. Why? Why did he send a fish to swallow him up? He disobeyed. He disobeyed. And it was a whale. And then he got out of the whale's belly. And what did Jonah do then? He went away. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. So it would have been better if he would have just obeyed when God told him to. That way he would have. Yeah. And sometimes when we're disobedient, or you know, God tells us to do something and we really don't want to do it right now, 
He doesn't actually, you know, a whale doesn't come and swallow us up. But we might feel like we're in a, the belly of the whale. We might, yeah. you know, feel like um, we'll feel conviction, you know, until we go and obey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be kind of freaky. I'd like to have them all go out. I think the whale spewed him out. Yeah, or did the water come out of his back? No, he's the whale. Yeah, and it was a real gross way he came out. <laughs> <laughs> is immediate. That is obedience. When your parents, when we tell you to do something, we mean to do it now. Okay, like when you guys get up in the morning and I say, um, you know, go brush your teeth. Do I mean whenever you feel ready? Right. Whenever you feel right. like right. you're... Right then. Yeah, right you then. need to do it right then. That is obedience. Waiting two hours later is not obedience. That's disobedience. That's do not you say it. You go and right. do it. Right. All right. Now we're going to go and find John. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Like this guy's out? Hmm? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I think that's John. I can't read it from here, but yeah, it looks like it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. Chapter 14. Love me, keep my commandments. That is very clear, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's not complicated at all. Okay. We often don't think about what our actions show about how we feel about God. We don't think about, about that. Well, this week you have an assignment is to willingly and immediately obey God. Okay? If God is, you know, if you're faced with a decision, on to do one thing and to do what God tells you to do and to do what someone else tells you to do, you need to obey God. Obey God's voice immediately and willingly. Um, our obedience pleases God. Now, I'm, I was going to take your all's pictures today, put them on your picture frame because we've got prayers um, for you all to consider, but since Rusty's not here. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw. You want to draw? No, I don't have anything to draw. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything to draw. What? A little bit. A little bit. No, there's nothing for us to draw, though. You can draw one in a little bit. Okay. Um, so let's let's say a say a prayer, okay? I've got the prayer here. Okay. All right, you repeat it after me, okay? Heavenly Father, I love you. I want to show you my love for you by obeying you. Help me to remember this. Help me show you I love you by willingly and immediately obeying you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
and sing Wozniak. <clears throat> oh, that's the Bible. All right. Goodness. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Good job. Very good.
always with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our cold he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows, and the joy He bestows, are for all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Men and fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be saved? Yes. Amen. Yes, um, do y'all remember what we uh, what we uh, were on a couple week a couple weekends ago? What we studied on? Remember we had the board up here? We were looking at the timeline to heaven. Mm -hmm. Ever since, uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, when we uh, begin walking with the Lord, um, you know, we just uh, look at uh, salvation and we say, well, you know, we accept the Lord and we believe we're going to go to heaven and uh, we say, well, you know, we just die and go to heaven one day. Well, the Lord has a lot of things in store for us uh, in the scriptures that he tells us about end times and about the timeline and the process uh, to heaven. And um, so... Well, there's a lot of, uh, lot of things in his word. Uh, the Bible tells us that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. God is as deep as you want to go. Uh, he will reveal to us uh, as much as we want to seek him. And... Uh, so we were, we were uh, 
we're actually, uh, the one part that we were looking at last week, one of the things we were looking at was we were looking where the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and that, uh, uh, that the Bible tells us, for it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment, and uh, we were looking at the rapture, about that when the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and, the, and with the trump of God, and, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, so uh, we, we understand that the Lord is uh, going to uh, descend from heaven, and he's going to shout, and uh, I believe he's going to say, come up hither. And uh, I believe that his voice is going to sound like a trumpet. Yeah. I believe that uh, the Lord's voice is going to be loud enough that all of the Christians in the entire world will be able to hear even the dead uh, in the graves, uh, will, will reunite with their spirit, and their bodies will be glorified. Our bodies will be glorified, and we'll have a body fashioned like unto Jesus' body. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that, uh, you know, when they went and they looked in the tomb, Jesus' body wasn't there. Jesus wasn't walking around in the spirit. No. After his resurrection, Jesus walked around in a body. Right. He told Thomas, he said, reach hither your hand and feel, touch, mm -hmm. thrust it in my side, and be not faithless but believing. Touch the nail prints in my hand. Jesus even ate. Amen. He ate honeycomb and he ate fish. He asked his disciples, he says, have you any meat? Uh, when he met him on the shore in the, in the book of John. And, and so uh, I believe that we'll have a glorified body, Amen. fashioned like unto Jesus' yeah. body. And glory be to God. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. But the Bible tells us to seek those things which are above and not those things that are on the earth. Amen. The things that are seen are temporal. All the things around us are just temporary, sure. but the things that are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, glory be to God. Uh, folks, folks have a hard time believing in the creation. Well, if you look in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says that the things which are seen are made by the things which doth not appear. Everything that is made that we see is, cre cre is, is composed of atoms, atomic particles. And brother, you can't see an atom. But you see what God took and put atoms together. Hebrews 11 declared that everything is made, composed by atomic particles. The things that are made are comprised of those things that do not appear. You can't see atoms, but you can see what God took and put together. That's right. And glory be to God, uh, that's the same way with the wind. I can't see the wind, but I can see the effects of the wind. Jesus said that in John chapter 3 and verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, nor whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So, glory be to God. I'm looking for the return of my Savior. I can't see Him, but I can sure see the effects of Him. I can feel the effects of Him. I can, I can feel and I, and I know His presence and I hear His voice. Isn't it good to hear His voice? Amen. Amen. Now, there are things, certain things in the Bible that are, that are a mystery. But a mystery is something that was hidden, but is yet now revealed. Amen. God has given us His Word to reveal the truth to us. And, uh, and, if, and if we seek the Lord and we uh, ask for His guidance, the Bible said in Jeremiah, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If you desire to be filled with God's righteousness, if you desire to be filled with God's word, Jesus said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's a promise of God. Yes, I like Amen. Yes. The Bible says that the Lord, that delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. You know, there's no greater desire. There is no desire in this world that will satisfy you like Jesus will. Amen. Right. Jesus is the desire of our heart. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir, Jesus. There, 
A lot of folks like to say, to say, well, you know, if I do good for God, He'll give me a new car or He'll give me a new house. That is not what that scripture says. Jesus is the only thing that satisfies your heart and your soul. That's right. There is nothing. Brother, the Bible says that, uh, that, that hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Amen? But Jesus will satisfy us. Amen? Yes. Oh, glory. Praise Amen. God. I'm so thankful for who Jesus is. Amen. So we're going to study today. Uh, we, we looked at the rapture, and we looked at, uh, but, but today we're going to look at something that you probably won't hear much preached about, and that's the tribulation, the things that will happen during the pr tribulation period. Today we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at the wicked trinity that will be here during the tribulation period. You don't hear much preached about that. You don't hear much taught about that. There is going to be a strong delusion here during the tribulation period. It will be a delusion. It will be, it will be something that, that many people will fall for. But I'm glad that, brother, if we believe and we trust God, God has not appointed us under wrath. God has not appointed us under this time of tribulation. Revelation 3 and 10, where we were at last week, because... Thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will spare thee from the hour of temptation which shall try the whole world. So brother, uh, if you didn't know what sickness was like, you wouldn't know what it was like to be healed. Amen? If you didn't know what hell was like, you wouldn't know what it, was, what it meant to be saved. If you didn't know what judgment and condemnation was, you wouldn't know what it meant to have salvation and redemption. Amen? And so I'm glad today, I'm glad today for the Scriptures that shows me what God is going to spare His people from that believe. Amen. I'm glad this morning, brother, because the Bible tells me that the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of here. Yeah. And you know what? I can't be separated from the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen? There when Robin was teaching in John chapter 14, he said, hey, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter and he shall be with you forever. So when the Holy Ghost goes, guess what? I'm going with him. Hallelujah. I can't be separated from him. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Woo. He said he'd be forever. Glory. Hallelujah. But the Bible says here in Romans chapter 11, I would not have, would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That is uh, Romans chapter 11 and verse 25. God doesn't want us to be ignorant. He does not want us to not know about this mystery. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles. Brother, that means that when all the Gentiles are saved, then the, the blindness in Israel, the veil is going to be lifted. And they're going to be able to see. They'll see God is going to provoke them to jealousy. Amen? They'll be provoked to jealousy. Glory be to God. And so uh, we're going to look at the strong delusion this morning. And uh, look with me, if you would, at 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, I want to ask you a question here uh, uh, this morning before we uh, begin looking more at the Scriptures. Have you ever told a story, and you tell a story, and you start at the beginning of the story, and as you're telling the story, you, things come to your memory about things that you may have forgotten and you go back and you begin telling other parts of the story? Mm -hmm. Or do you tell it from beginning to end and don't leave anything out? You see, that, that's how I am. I believe that's how a lot of other folks are is that when you begin telling a story, telling something that happened, an event that happened to you, as you're telling it, you'll go back and you say, oh, yeah, I want to tell you about this part too. See, the Bible's like that in some places. It's like that in the book of Revelation. There's things John experienced, and John is writing these things down. These are things that John saw. He experienced these things. 
And he wrote them down. It was something that, it wasn't something that he was just told, but he was raptured. The Bible said, come, that Jesus said, come up hither, for I'm going to show you things that will be hereafter. So he wrote down these things, and as he wrote these things, there were things, other things that came to memory. And so as we read the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation doesn't go in exact chronological order. There are places where John goes back and he adds detail. He goes back to things, to times even when Satan was cast out of heaven. Amen? So there's, there's, we, we must look at the book of Revelation and we must look at these end times in the Spirit of God. It's important. The Spirit searches all things. Amen? Yea, the deep things of God. Let us pray together uh, before we go to God's Word. And, and ask for God's enlightenment upon the bread of life. Father, Almighty, in the name of Jesus, we praise you, Father, for your word. We praise you, Father, that for the word that lives and abides forever, Father God. Lord, we just praise you, Father, for who you are. And we thank you, dear Lord God, for the promise of our soon coming Savior. Lord God, we just look for him. And Lord God, we pray that we might be found, dear Lord God, doing that which pleases you, Father. Lord God, that we wouldn't be drunk, dear Lord, on this world, but Father, that we would be clothed in the armor of light of Jesus Christ. And Father, we'll give you all the praise, dear Lord, for everything that's accomplished and said here this morning through the power of your Spirit and in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus we pray, and amen. The Word tells us here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech ye, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And we have studied, and we have, and we have proclaimed, and we have seen in the scriptures in 2 Corinthians 6, that today is the day of salvation, but the day of Christ is at hand. It's coming. The day of the Lord. It's going to, Joel declared to be a great and a terrible day. It's coming. The day of the Lord is coming. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to be saved. Now is the time to trust upon the Lord with all of your heart. Now is the time to call out to Him. But brother, I tell you that the day of Christ is coming. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself, that he is God. Now many people today, I've heard people say different theories. I've heard them say that Barack Obama, that they thought was the Antichrist. Brother, I want you to know that the Antichrist will not be revealed to Christians. He will not be revealed to believers. We will be gone. We will be out of this place. There will be a falling away the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. He'll oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. And he'll say he'll be it so that he as God setteth in the temple of God and he'll show that he is God. And he, he remember not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. In verse 6 it says, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. What withholdeth this? What is withholding? What withholds the iniquity abounding boundlessly around this world? It is the Holy Spirit. It is the church of, of God and it is the Christian people, brother, that are praying, that are standing for righteousness' sake, that are preaching the gospel, that are proclaiming the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is what is withholding. Amen. The Bible says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The church will be taken out of the way. 
And then this son of perdition will be revealed. And then, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Look, look at that scripture right there. We read past these things, and a lot of times we don't realize what it says. It says that his coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Take note of that. With all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that believe and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But, aren't you glad for that but? Amen. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Did you know that God chose you before this world was even created? God chose you to be saved. Amen. Brother, that's comforting to me. And it says, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren... Stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We see that there is going to be an end time that's, going, that's coming God Himself is going to send strong delusion because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. This strong delusion is going to be something that is going to be nearly impossible for someone not to fall for. Nearly impossible. There's a, there's a type, there's an allegory of this in 1 Kings 22 where King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah came together and they met together and uh, they, they were going to go up against Ramoth Gilead. And uh, uh, the Jehoshaphat had a bunch of prophets of Baal, but Ahab asked for another prophet. And he says, well, uh, there's one other prophet, uh, his name's Micaiah, but I hate him because he always prophesies evil unto me and never good. And so they go and they get Micaiah, and Micaiah at first tells them what they want to hear. But the king knows that he's lying to him, and he says, now tell me the truth, what has the Lord told you? And the Bible says that Micaiah says that there was a great meeting. There was a meeting in heaven. And then all of these gathered together and said, and the, and, and the Lord said, who is going to go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of Jehoshaphat? And they said, and there was one that spoke up, and he says, I'll go and be the lying spirit. The Bible says that the prophets told him, Go, Ramoth Gilead's yours. But Micaiah says, If you go, you're going to die. If you go and you and you do this, you're going to die, king. The king chooses to believe the lie because he wouldn't receive the truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that a man took a bow and he drew it at a venture, and he shot it, and it smoked the king right between his shoulder blades. And he died. And he died. Because why? He didn't receive the love of the truth that he might be saved. He chose to believe a lie instead of believing the truth. Brother, the truth makes us free. Amen. Believing the truth makes us free. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And there's a lot of symbolism that goes, that, that is in the book of Revelation. There is a lot of spiritual things. The Bible says it uh, talks about a city uh, that, is, uh, that is spiritually called Sodom. So there are things that are spiritualized and symbolized in the book of Revelation. And it is the book of Revelation 
It is the book of the Revelation. It is not Revelations, plural. It is Revelation, the book of the Revelation. What is the Revelation? The Revelation is Jesus Christ. It is one revelation. It is, brother, it is, it, it, the, 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 the search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. So there is a lot of symbolism that is in the book of Revelation. Uh, in this uh, chapter, in chapter 13, uh, John sees, John is standing on the sea. And he see, the Bible says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven horns, seven heads, and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Well, first of all, a beast, uh, when we think of a beast, we might think of some terrible looking monster. But Jesus told us, he told us that to, that to beware of false prophets, he said, for inwardly they are ravening wolves. That is the beast that he's re referring to here, is it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen? It is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And so the beast is referenced to a wolf. Amen. When Jesus taught in John chapter 10, he says that he talked about the wolf. That when the wolf comes, uh, that the hireling flees because he is a hireling. Amen. But the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So the wolf, the wolf is representative here of a, of a false prophet, a false messiah. Uh, so we see here that the Bible says that he has seven heads. Now, the, the number seven is a number of perfection. And also, we see the number ten. And the number ten, uh, 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 the, the number seven, God created the earth, heaven and the earth, and he rested on the seventh day. It was a day of completion. We see in, uh, with the, the number ten that God made the ten commandments. God, there was, God made a, a, a number of ten is a number of, of completion also. It's a number of, of being full, uh, total, or nothing lacking. So we see that he has seven heads, which, uh, uh, which, which could tell us that he has uh, complete worldly knowledge, the representative of the head, ruling the dominions of the earth, that, there's, uh, that he has ten crowns uh, representing his authority or his power. So he has, uh, what did it say there in 2 Thessalonians? That it's after the working of Satan with all power and deceivableness and unrighteousness. So he has all of this worldly power, this beast does. He has horns. Horns are representative uh, of, of power, and uh, crowns are representative of authority. Heads are representative of knowledge. So this, this one who comes up out of the sea, which the sea is representative of a great multitude of people. So this beast rises up out of the sea. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now Daniel chapter 7 talks about this same beast. Daniel prophesied as, uh, uh, brother, there is a lot of, re of revelation is also in Daniel and also in the book of Isaiah. It's also in the book of Ezekiel. There's a lot of revelation in the Old Testament. Amen. It all points to the same thing, which is Jesus Christ. And so Daniel explains this, and, and the leopard is representative of Babylon. It's rep the bear is representative of Persia, and the lion is representative of Greece. This man, this wolf, this beast, he is going to be from a Gentile that is from many different nationalities. You see, there, that's how we are today. I'm not uh, full-blooded, 100% American. I believe we have German in us. I believe, from what Brother Jim said, I believe we have Hebrew in us, the name Lily. Uh, I, believe that there's a, I believe that there may be French in our family. I believe, uh, from what my grandma told me, that we have Blackfoot Indian in our family. So we have many nations in a lot of us, in a lot of, and that's how this man is going to be. 
This man is going to have the nationality of Babylon, Persia, and Greece. He has the, 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 uh, the, he's like unto a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth and the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So uh, what is the dragon? The, the Bible tells us uh, that in, in Revelation, just one chapter back, and in verse 9, that the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, which is uh, called the devil and Satan. So we know that Satan, as we read there in 2 Thessalonians, uh, that Satan gives this beast his power. He is literally, he is literally the Antichrist. You see, for every, just about everything that, uh, that God has, Satan tries to make a counterfeit. And just as there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, there's the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The wicked trinity. You see, uh, there's going to be uh, a antichrist who is literally possessed by Satan himself. He will literally be Satan in the flesh. This antichrist will. Just as God was God in the flesh and Jesus Christ his son, this son of perdition, this son of wickedness, this son of sin will be uh, uh, indwelt by Satan himself. The Bible says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his, his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Well, his heads, we, we uh, uh, look at that they were, there were seven heads, and that they were uh, representative of his worldly power and worldly authority. And so uh, this is going to be uh, one, of the, one of the nations that he's ruled is, is, is wounded, but yet it's healed. Uh, and it, and, it, and uh, uh, it's, it's not healed in a good sense, but it's healed in a sense of wickedness to where he can have a complete dominion over the world. The Bible says, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? who is able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So we see that this beast, we see that this ruler of the world, uh, that he's going to speak great things. Even it's said there in 2 Thessalonians that there's going to be signs and wonders and that he is going to have a great, deception he is going to be able to deceive those that did not receive the love of the truth and it was given unto him to make war uh, he says and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwelt in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him in all kindreds and tongues and nations. I believe wholeheartedly that during the tribulation period that there will be people who profess to be Christians who are going to be left here on this earth. They profess to be Christian, and they will be here, and brother, they are going to suffer greatly because of their profession of Christianity. I believe also uh, that there will be Jewish people whose eyes are open. And I believe that they will suffer greatly for the gospel's sake. I believe, as Brother Jim has taught, that there will come a time when they will cry for Jesus to return and Jesus will return when they cry out for Him. And Jesus will come. He will come. But brother, before that, there will be a great tribulation like this world has never seen. You think that the Holocaust of World War II, when six million Jews were burned in ovens is bad, brother, that is nothing compared to the Great Chip Tribulation. Right. Iniquity is going to abound. Evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. He will, it will be given to him uh, power to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power with over all kindreds and tongues and nations. 
and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. In other words, don't let it go in one ear and come out the other. Listen, this is something that you need to hear today. We need to know, brother, what this world is going to face. What is coming upon this world because they have rejected the Son of God. All the wrath of God has not came yet, brother, but it is coming. The day of the Lord is at hand. The Bible says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Brother, Jesus told us in the Olivet Discourse that in your patience possess ye your souls. The Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So we understand there is a dragon, which is Satan. We understand that there is a beast, the first beast, which is the Antichrist, which is the false Messiah. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth and them which dwelt therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This is the false prophet. This is the false prophet. He is indwelt with the spirit of Antichrist. He is indwelt with the spirit of Satan. And just as prophets today proclaim the righteousness of Jesus Christ and God's eternal salvation and for the love of those that will be saved, this uh, false prophet will proclaim and cause all the world to worship the Antichrist. He will be a false prophet. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Just as Elijah did. Amen. Elijah, when he set up on the mountain, and the king sent to, for them to come and bring him, Elijah set up on the mountain, and they said, Come down, the king wants you. Elijah called for fire out of heaven, and it came down and it devoured him. The Bible said the king sent some more. Brother, they didn't come so boldly the next time. They came humbling themselves, and they asked him to come. Glory be to God. Jesus said, the Bible said that Jesus was passing through and the Bible said he was on his way to Judea and they wouldn't let Jesus pass through a certain city. And his disciples said to him, they said, Lord, should we call down fire out of the heaven as Elijah did and to consume them? And Jesus said, the Son of Man came not to destroy men, but to save them. He came to save men. Glory be to God. The Bible says here that this false prophet will be given power to call down fire. The Bible says that it will deceive them. In verse 14, And deceive them that dwelt on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, just as Nebuchadnezzar set up his idol and said, you bow down or I'm going to cast you into the fiery furnace. There will be many who will actually, literally, be beheaded for the gospel. They'll be beheaded because they believe God. You see, there's going to be some who are proclaiming the gospel during the tribulation period. Yes, sir. I'm glad for that. As a matter of fact, there are going to be two prophets that proclaim the gospel. In Revelation chapter 11, God sends His two witnesses that proclaim the gospel. They proclaim the gospel almost exactly seven years. Just a little under seven years. They proclaim the gospel. And then they are killed in the street. And the entire world will see them killed. And the world will rejoice. The world will rejoice that they were killed and their bodies will lay dead in the street for three and a half days. But after three and a half days, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. 
The Bible says that the Lord is going to say, come up hither. Right. He's going to say, come up hither, and they're going to be raptured before the world, and the world's going to see it. Amen. The world's going to see them raptured. Glory be to God. Brother, hmm. The Bible says that he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. I've heard people say today, it's social security cards. It's a national ID. It's a computer chip. Look, brother, you need not worry about what it is. Amen. You should trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. You should trust Jesus as your Savior. Receive the love of the truth. Uh, glory be to God. God has not appointed us under wrath. Glory be to His holy name. Uh, God has appointed us unto salvation. And He's taking those that believe out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. You need not be concerned with the mark of the beast. Glory be to God. I'm thankful today. Yeah. Amen. For His salvation. That God is going to deliver those that believe upon His name. Let's look back again at the book of Thessalonians. See, there's going to be an abomination that takes place. The abomination of desolation is what Christ called it. He was quoting from Daniel. Jan Daniel uh, chapter 9, uh, I believe it was Daniel chapter 10, and also Daniel chapter 11. Uh, Daniel spoke about an abomination of desolation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I know that Brother Jim knows this chapter very well. The Bible says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. There is going to be a peace treaty that is signed. And it's going to be between the people of Israel and it's going to be between the Antichrist. Those that do not believe, they will be deceived with strong delusion. And when they say peace and safety, then will come sudden destruction upon them. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet, uh, the hope of salvation. Verse 9, For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. These things are not appointed unto believers. These things, these are the things that God will spare you from. This is what it means to be saved. Amen. It means you're saved from sin. You're saved from destruction. You're saved from hell and torment upon this earth. Yes, now this week we're looking at the the, the, uh, the strong delusion that will come. But next week, Lord willing, next time that the Lord uh, allows us to, uh, we're going to look at the seals of the apocalypse that are opened upon this world during the tribulation. It's going to be a terrible place. Yeah. It's going to be a terrible place. God has not appointed us under wrath, but under salvation. Aren't you glad? Amen. Look with me, if you would. 
in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, Jesus, they asked Jesus about the, uh, the end times and when the end of the world would come. And Jesus, uh, Jesus gave, uh, told them, and uh, I believe that, that this, what's called the Olivet Discourse, and he's at the Mount of Olives and he's talking about the things that are going to happen. Uh, he's talking about that there's going to be uh, the gospel in verse 14. Well, let's just, let's, just, let's just start back here where Jesus starts speaking in verse 4. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. Why? Why is Jesus saying that? There's going to be a great deception. There is going to be a great deception. There are going to be those who the, the Antichrist is going to proclaim that he is the Messiah. He's going to proclaim that he is God in the temple of God. He is going to proclaim this. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, take heed that no man shall deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumor of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets that shall arise and deceive many. So Jesus talked about that there was going to be one that called himself Christ. And now Jesus is talking about a false prophet. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations. And then shall the end come. After those two prophets are raptured, the end's coming. You watch. Glory be to God. The end's coming. You can read it in Revelation 11. After those prophets are raptured, then the end comes. Yeah. Glory be to God. It goes right along with what Jesus is teaching. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house not come not down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child that give suck in those days. And pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. There's going to be an abomination. There's going to be a, uh, an idol that's set up. In Revelation 13, it tells us about that idol. It's going to be uh, given life, the Bible says. And there's also going to be a peace treaty uh, between Israel and the Antichrist. And there's going to be great tribulation such as was not since before the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be, except those days should be shortened. There shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise, here he's saying it again, uh, there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. Brother, I guarantee you, as much as I'm standing here today, if a man, if, if a man would do signs and wonders today, people would flock to him. If a man could, could, could cause signs and wonders in the sky and cause miracles to happen, millions upon millions would follow that man. Brother, you get somebody that preaches the truth and you get something, brother, that cuts to the heart and there's not a lot of people that will follow that. Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the great and broad is the way that leads to destruction. <coughs> and many there be which go in there thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Aren't you glad to be part of the few? Amen. Amen. Except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. He shall show great signs and wonders in so much if it were possible that they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. 
Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is going to come after this tribulation. He's going to come with ten thousands of his saints. As the Bible tells us in the book of Jude, that Enoch prophesied in the day of Enoch, who walked with God and then he was not, for God took him. Enoch prophesied that Jesus, that God's going to come with ten thousands of his saints. Glory be to God. I'm looking forward to that day. You know, I, I thank God today for his salvation and the power of his Holy Spirit. Because it's not us who save ourselves, and it's not us who keep ourselves, but it is the power of God's Word and the power of God's Holy Spirit. It is God's Holy Spirit that leads us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. It is the Holy Spirit of God Almighty that causes us to obey and keep His commandments. It's the Holy Spirit. We can never do it on our own. It's impossible. And it's, it's the Holy Spirit that causes us to love Him. You see, there's times that we all go through trials today in this world. There's, there's tribulation that we go through even in our lifetime now. And brother, it's going to get worse. Jeremiah had a very profound scripture, a very profound uh, scripture that he wrote in Jeremiah 12 and 5. He says, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if, the la if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? So I ask you this morning, each and every one, from the very youngest to the very oldest of us, if you weary in today's day of salvation, how's it going to be in the day of tribulation? How's it going to be in the, during the great tribulation? Listen, the Holy Spirit keeps you. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed yes. and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That day is the day of Christ. He will keep you. He will strengthen you. Only trust him. Amen. Only trust him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, my Savior God, Lord, for what you give us in your word. We praise you, Father God, Lord, for the revelation through your spirit. And Father God, Lord, for the edification that you give us, dear Lord. Lord God, knowing that Jesus is our Savior, knowing that his name means Savior, that he saved us from our sins. Father, thank you for that this morning. We praise you, Father God, and Lord God, we seek to praise you for all eternity. Father, for what you have done. And Lord God, even what you're going to do, dear Lord. For Lord God, we know that you have chosen us before the foundation of this world. That Lord God, that you determined Christ to be crucified, to be slain, even before the world was created, Father. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for your plan of salvation, the perfect plan, uh, dear Lord God, that you have given us. Father, I pray that, dear Lord God, that we might proclaim Dear Lord, the, the things that are to come, that dear Lord God, that you might fill us with the spirit of prophecy, that dear Lord God, that we might tell our families, our neighbors, our friends, even those who consider us our enemy, dear Lord God, that we might tell them of the love of Jesus, that they might be saved and receive the truth. Father, thank you this morning for that. Thank you, dear Lord God, I praise you and give you glory, Father for all that you accomplished through us. I pray, keep each and every one of us, Father. Lord, from the very youngest and the very innocent, dear Lord, to the very oldest and the very uh, wise, dear Lord, keep us each and every one. Father God, under your day. And Father, I give you the praise in Jesus' name. And amen. 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 Does anyone have a song, a song of invitation, if you'd like to pray this morning? You have some burden on your heart, a care, a desire. The Bible says to cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. I had a lady say one time, she said, well, there's some things that you just can't handle and you need to take it to him. I said, cast all your care upon him, yeah. for he cares for you. Everything, everything, lay it 
at the feet of Jesus. That's why he came. He came to help those that can't help themselves. How about we sing only trust him? Tennessee, and he uh, he sent an email, and he he was he's very thankful for the the the, the services. He said that uh, he, he uh, he's looking for a home church. He said if he wasn't two states away, he'd come 
And this would be his church if, 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 he, if, if we would have him. Bless his heart. He seems very hungry for the Lord. And, and I'm, I'm real thankful for it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else have something to say? Amen. I thoroughly enjoy that. Bless Jesus. Sermon today. It's Amen. Wonderful. Bless Jesus. Amen. Very good. Brother Jim, would you lead us? Praise, Praise Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise mercy, mercy endureth forever. Praise